And finally, at the bottom of our execution assets, we come to the test case result. Looking at the details of a test case result first, we see the user had to indicate for every step they executed whether that step passed or failed. And of course, then we have an overall result, this test failed. Every test case execution record, which has described a particular environment and test plan that we are running this test case against, every one of those execution records creates a test case result record for every single test run. So here we see run one failed. Run two may fail. It may pass. How many times do you run this one test for a specific test case execution record? All of those results are kept by RQM. You have a permanent history of every combination that caused you to run the test case. That's the test case execution records tracking that. And then every run of that execution record and what the results were. Let's go take a look in the tool at the results as they are linked to your execution record. So here I am in a test case and I've selected the test case execution record section. I have two execution records. One for testing in Firefox with the WAS server and one for testing in Firefox with the Tomcat server. These are my execution records, the two different variations in environments that I plan to test this piece of functionality. I can go look at these execution records. Right now you can see the last run against Tomcat failed and the last run against Waz was successful. Well, let's go take a look at the execution record for running against Tomcat. If I look at the summary, this is the last result failed. If I look at all previous results, I have run this particular test case execution record multiple times, and they are all listed here. And you can see I've got failed and inconclusive and blocked and failed. I have not yet gotten this functionality to work at all. If I dive down into one of these execution record results, these are the results here of all of these tests, I can see the last one, which in fact failed, and this is the full set of details from that last failed run. You can see the first two steps passed, and the third one, the application crashed. And so I couldn't test any further than that. And in fact, I submitted a defect. When you are running a test, for each step, you say whether it passed or failed. If it failed, you give a reason it failed. You can put attachments, screenshots associated with that failure. And with a single click of a button, you can actually generate a bug. It goes into Team Concert and is tracked. And this is the information that is inserted into that bug automatically. What we were testing, the test plan, the test case, the script that was used, the project area, what environment we were testing, this was generated automatically by RQM. The user just pushed the create a bug, and all of that information was dumped in. So, I'll meet back up again. Test case execution record is a specific environment for the test case. So I'm testing the allocate dividends functionality in Firefox, DB2 database, Tomcat on Windows. And I have run that particular test in that environment a number of times, not yet gotten it to pass. If I back up, I've got the same ability in WAS to dive down into that execution record. I can see the last test passed. And if I look at prior results, it's been run a couple of times and it's been doing well. It's passed. I got 
at one point I, I got an inconclusive, but my last test is passed. And again, I can go down and look at the details of that particular run, and you can see every single step passed. So for each test case, which is for a particular piece of functionality, if you've included that test case in a plan, the plan helps you generate the execution records, the different scenarios you are actually going to use to test this functionality. For each of those execution records, you run at the test and keep track of the results, and you have multiple result records depending on how many times you ran it, and each result record is showing you all of the steps and the results of each test in detail. Now, with all of this information stored in RQM, I have the ability to do a lot of reporting and trending on what environments, what functionality, have I run the tests, which ones are passing, which ones are failing.